Here's everything that you need to know in order to pass any cloud certification exam. With the advice that I give on cloud certification exams, I help this person pass their AI engineer exam with over 900 and this person pass it with 931. And I'm looking to see who will beat that score for a specialized exam and reach a clean 1000 points. Let me know down in the comments what's the latest exam that you passed and hit the like button and subscribe if you want to pass these cloud certification exams with the highest possible score. Let me tell you exactly what what you need to do in order to make sure that you pass these cloud certification exams. Because regardless of the specialization and beyond the individual curriculum and individual topics, there's a strategy that you need to implement when taking these exams. A strategy that has more to do with your behavior, with the way that you pace yourself and about your mental state when you're actually taking these exams. First, any cloud certification, whether it's beginners or for specialists, it requires studying and it requires practical experience. You need that practical experience with the services that you're testing yourself for because these exams, you know, they're supposed to be difficult to pass. So don't expect to pass without studying or if you haven't worked with the cloud services, they're part of the learning path. Also, the questions require proper thinking and focus. I think one of the big problems with taking exams is maintaining focus throughout an exam because I noticed that my attention span as well gets shorter each year. So I think this can affect our ability to actually maintain focus for an hour or so when we're taking these exams. So even if you're experienced, and even if you went through the learning materials, you still need to pay attention because you can easily be tricked if you misread something. This happened to me especially when I was taking practice tests. Because when you take practice tests, there's no risk so you might not be paying attention properly. But in an exam setting, you need to read the question properly and you need to analyze the answers and see which ones make sense. Because here's the thing, right? Nobody wants to trick you. They all want you to pass. And if you check the answers properly, then you're going to be able to see which ones make sense in the actual context of the question. And I believe you have common sense, so I think you're going to do very well if you actually focus and if you read the tasks carefully. And the last thing before we actually talk about the exam process and the strategy that I recommend is the practice test from Azure Learn because these practice tests are not going to be a direct match or even similar to the types of questions that you're going to get in the exam because the exam questions will actually be harder and more complex. But what the practice tests help with is to understand the topics that are assessed because you can and you should use practice tests to actually see what topics you need to learn more about, right? For example, each of us, right? Each of us has more knowledge when it comes to the specific services that they used previously. And of course you have less knowledge of the ones that you didn't come across, but the practice tests are built around all the topics in the learning paths. And that's how they help to let you know exactly what you don't know so that you can learn about the services that you're not 100% familiar with. And speaking of this, right, at Get That Badge, we offer practice tests to help you prepare for cloud certification exams. We currently have both Azure and Databricks practice exams and we're adding more every week. So definitely check it out as if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You support Decision Forest and you support yourself by learning a new skill. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's go through the exam process. And I'm going to talk about everything from booking it to the exam experience, time management and pacing yourself, how to review questions at the end of the exam and how and when to use the open book feature so that you can get the best results. Registering is straightforward and if your company is eligible for discount, you can check that by entering your work email here. So if you're eligible for a discount, you can just apply the discount and you're going to get a percentage off. This is great and it applies at the end where you actually need to make the payment. You choose online with OnView and here you can see exactly what you need so that you're prepared for the exam because you're going to need your ID and you're going to need to learn about the acceptable spaces. And this is the room where you're going to actually take the exam in. And they're very particular about the desk setup and about the surroundings. So it's very good to know these things. So go through all of these check marks and now you can just book the date and the time. Next, you can check the details again and just proceed to checkup. Before starting the exam, it's important to run a system test to make sure that everything is running properly. Here, you can check the microphone, you can check your speakers, and you can check your camera so that all runs well. It also checks for network connectivity and afterwards it checks to see that you don't have any other windows that are open. Your setup is ready and you can just take the exam. The whole process is pretty smooth. At the beginning, you have a nice check-in process that goes through everything that you need to know. You're going to need to take a photo of your government ID and then you need to take photos of your desk and its surroundings. 
You need to make sure that the desk is clean and that you don't have anything within reach. After you go through all of this, they're going to put you in a queue and then you're going to have to wait for the test to start. And this can be quick, but it can also take up to 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the proctor and how fast the person checks all of your documents and your desk setup. If there are any problems, the proctor will call you and you're going to need to sort things out. For me, each time I actually took the exam, I was called before because they needed to check the desk. So I always had to move my laptop around so that they can see all the corners right of, of the desk and they also asked me to unplug my extra monitor because I have one on the table you know because I always take these exams in the same room so now I kind of know these things beforehand and this is something that I really like because I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that are trying to figure out how to cheat on these exams so please learn properly and never cheat because it really makes no sense because you really need to know what you're learning because getting a certification right just for the sake of having it it doesn't mean much what really matters is what you learned prior to the exam and the exam is actually just a confirmation that you learned well. And now your exam starts, right? And at the beginning they're going to ask you a couple of questions to assess your level of proficiency in the subject matter that you're testing yourself for. There are about three questions around this and you're going to provide answers from one to five, five stating that you're the top professional in the subject matter. And in different exams I played around with this because I wanted to see if it actually impacts the difficulty of the exam questions. Now what I've done this, I've done this with different exams for different specialties so I cannot really be 100% sure but in my opinion these choices don't influence in any way the difficulty of the questions that you're going to receive. The strategy that I normally use in these exams is centered around making sure right, that I have enough time to go through all of the questions. Because you have a varying number of questions, then you need to be a little bit flexible and you need to adjust so that you don't run out of time. But at the same time, you also need to spend enough time on each question so that you give it your best. My strategy for passing cloud certification exams is to first go through the questions that I'm 100% sure of. And for the questions that I'm not 100% sure of, I just select the answer that I think is most likely to be correct and then mark that question for review so I can double check it at the end. The reason why you want to provide an answer, even if you're not 100% sure, is that if you run out of time for any reason, at least you provided an answer and you still have a chance that it was the correct one. So go through all of the questions carefully, don't spend more than one minute and a half on each, then provide an answer and then mark them for review if you're not 100% sure. The goal is to have as few questions as possible that you're unsure of, but most likely you're going to have around, I don't know, like let's say 10 to 15 questions that you're going to want to double check. But always provide an answer to all of the questions, even if you're unsure. Never ever leave any question unanswered because you might run out of time and you might not be able to come back to review all of them at the end. In fundamentals exams, this is straightforward and you can just fully implement this. Because fundamentals exams are not open book as of now and this is the best strategy that you can use to actually save time and you can pass it with the best possible score. But in the specialist exams, there are a couple of aspects that you need to take into account. The first is that you have the open book feature available during the exam. And the second is that you might get simulations where you might need to deploy some resources and you can also get case studies where you're going to need to answer multiple questions that are centered around the case study. Now let's talk about the case studies first. What Azure normally does is to put the case study at the beginning of the exam and you're going to have a set of questions around it. Now the challenge here is that you're going to need to complete all of the case study questions before you can actually move on to the rest of the questions. As your exam will actually have two parts with their own review section, you won't actually be able to come back to them at the end. So you can only review this subset of questions during this case study part of the exam. And what this means is that you have to pace yourself twice because the case study will have about five or six questions. Therefore, you cannot really spend more than, I don't know, like 20 minutes on it. And that includes also the review part. So you can use up to, let's say, 20 minutes and then move on, okay? Don't spend more because then you're going to waste a lot of time. And I suggest that you don't use the open book feature on these because they're very specific to the scenario that you're actually doing. So the best thing to do is to pay attention to the case study, read it properly so you don't actually miss anything and do your best to answer it based on your knowledge and your common sense. Now let's talk about the feature that is currently only available for the specialist exams. What is the open book feature and how can you use it to maximize your chances to pass the exam? The open book feature allows you to use the Microsoft Learn website during these certification exams, but only the documentation and not the questions and answers. And when should you use it? As it's great, right? In theory, you could just use it for all of the questions and you can make sure that you get everything right. But in practice, the open book feature is a huge time sink. 
And I personally think that it's a great feature if you use it wisely, but the reality is that most of us won't use it like that. From my personal experience, you're going to find the answer for about 30 to 50% of the questions that you're checking. But that comes at a huge time cost because you burn a lot of time actually refining queries until you get that specific answer. So your success rate can be around 10% if you actually take into account how much time you actually spend trying to find those answers. So here's my advice on the open book feature. Only use it at the end when you check the questions that you marked for review. And not for all the questions, only for the questions where you can have clear search terms, like one word or two word searches. Because if you have a three word or more as a search phrase, then your chances of finding an answer are almost zero. The search is really bad and I think this is intentional as well because they could easily improve it. But from my experience, what worked for me when searching was for questions around various methods, REST API questions, or specific parameters. For anything else, even if you want to search, right, you're better off actually just trying to drill down to the section from the product documentation, then Azure, and then to the specific service that your question is related to. You can have more success this way than by searching, but this also takes more time and it can be kind of a guessing game because you don't know exactly where those uh, answers might be in that documentation. Now, having said this, the open book feature is useful if you have discipline, because if you can be disciplined enough to only search for two minutes per question, and then let go if you cannot find the answer, then I think it can work for you because you might find the answers to some questions. So here's my advice on passing cloud certification exams. I think if you fully engage with the study materials, both the theory and the labs, I think you're going to do well. And during these exams, take your time to focus on each question. Mark the questions that you're unsure of and return to them later. But always provide an answer so that you're covered if you run out of time. You have to think both logically and critically about the options and think whether they make sense having in mind the question. Overall, I think it's going to be a great experience and I'm sure that you're going to do very well. And I really hope that you're going to pass it with as close to perfection as possible. I really hope that this helped. And if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments and I'm going to reply to them as soon as possible. Also like and subscribe and I wish you good luck when you take the exam.